My name is Gabe, and in this video I'll be looking into Die Hard. Die Hard might seem like a surprise choice for a channel that views cinema as an art form, but I love this film. Yippee -ki, motherfucker. And I actually cite it more than any other movie when discussing how to do filmmaking right. I mean, the film features antagonists who are smart, a vulnerable hero who makes mistakes, Fucking stupid, Hans. You were saying? Henchmen with personalities, not just cannon fodder. Comic relief that isn't stupid jokes. Shit! Action that's coherently put together. Fights, stunts, and special effects that feel real, not choreographed or set up. Logical and motivated behavior. Welcome to the party, pal. Location as a character. Unpredictability. And so much more. All this adds up to what is, in my opinion, the best action movie ever made. But Die Hard is more than just the best action movie ever. It's actually in a completely different category. Comparable to films you'd never think to compare Die Hard to. To figure out what I'm talking about, let's go beneath the surface of the film. One dynamic in Die Hard everyone seems to be aware of is it being a Christmas movie. And for those who don't agree, check out this scene. So you got any Christmas music? This is Christmas music. It was December 24th on Holland Sabbath the dark. When I seen a man chilling with his dog in the park. McLean wants to listen to Christmas music not realizing he is listening to Christmas music, because the genre is not one Christmas music usually comes in. Now take everything I just said, except replace listen with watch and music with movie. Basically, the filmmakers are doing everything they can to tell us Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Hey, Merry Christmas. Die Hard being a Christmas movie is one sign that the film is more than it seems, but there's lots more. Take, for example, the entire opening. It's pretty much unheard of for action movies to start without action, and yet Die Hard does exactly that, starting with nothing but talking for 17 minutes. But somehow, this opening isn't boring, even though it's just talking, talking, talking. What is going on here? Sure, the film is setting up a whole bunch of stuff, but how is it doing it in an action movie without action, and also without being boring. Die Hard is able to do this because at its heart, it isn't an action film at all. It's a relationship drama. McLean's relationship with his wife permeates this film, whether it's her last name, the fights they have. Only John can drive somebody that crazy. His feelings towards Harry. Miss Summer. His relationship with his kids the guilt he feels. And nowhere is this scene better than in the film's stakes. All films must have high stakes. They're what makes the audience care. The higher, the better. The protagonist may lose his house. You're not gonna get killed, but you promise me you're not gonna get hurt? You're not gonna end up in the hospital? You're not gonna end up paralyzed? We have no, no prize money, right. we have no house, Test. we have payments for hospital Listen, bills. Listen, I promise you this. If I don't try in three weeks, they're gonna take the house. Who cares? The protagonist may lose his life. Trinity! Help! Now But even life or death isn't enough, because there are fates worse than death. If Indiana Jones dies, he doesn't just die. The Nazis will get a hold of the Ark and take over the world. Same goes for Sarah and John Connor. If they die, the machines will take over and humanity will be destroyed. We were that close to going out forever. But there was one man. Even overly simplified movies like Taken get this right. If Brian dies, then his daughter will be lost to the world of sex slavery. Can you imagine a fate for a father worse than that? McLean, however, doesn't face any of this. If he dies, the bad guys will simply get away with murder and make off with money. No evil takeovers, no end of the world, nothing like that. 
Die Hard's Fate Worse Than Death is actually the complete antithesis to those in normal action movies. And it, more than anything, is what separates this film from the rest. To discover Die Hard's Fate Worse Than Death, check out this moment. Listen, man, I'm starting to get a bad feeling up here. I want you to do something for me. Um, <clears throat> I want you to find my wife. Don't ask me how, by then you'll know how. It is here that McLean finally lets his emotions out. He admits how he feels and spills his guts. He couldn't do it with his wife. I think you have a clue as to what my idea of our I marriage should exactly be. I know exactly what your idea of our marriage should be. But he does so here. Tell her that, um, that she's the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me. She's heard me saying I love you a thousand times. She never heard me say I'm sorry. Turns out that, unlike every other action hero, McLean is not a perfect, awesome alpha male. He's actually far from it. A bad husband who takes his wife for granted, who can't make her or himself happy even though he loves her and she him. John. McLean may be a good cop, but when it comes to his family, he's a loser. And not only that, he messed up big. Everything Carl says. You know, when you're a rookie, they can teach you everything about being a cop except how to live with a mistake. McLean is also living. And this is McLean's fate worse than death, that he will die without ever apologizing to his wife, without ever making up for his mistakes. If McLean dies, the world doesn't end, but his opportunity to make up with his family does. Dying is one thing, but dying with regret Dying knowing the last things you did in life were the wrong things. Dying knowing you hurt your wife and family and can never make amends. These are all worse than death. This is a deep dynamic, an uncharacteristic for an action movie, where the heroes almost always are badasses, the only conflicts being outside of them. Internal conflict is the realm of drama, not action. But internal conflict is what Die Hard has. Knowing all this leads to an important question. If Die Hard is about internal conflicts, about a husband and wife's relationship, then what's the point of the action? Sure, it's awesome, but how does it serve the story? You may not believe this, but the answer to that brings us back to Christmas. Christmas movies, that is. What's the most classic Christmas story? Someone sad, bitter, frustrated or neglectful, confronts or is confronted by death, allowing him to realize and appreciate what he has. Think Ebenezer Scrooge and the Ghosts of Christmas, George Bailey seeing what life would be like without him, Kevin McAllister making his family disappear, Scott Calvin literally killing Santa. And John McClane fighting ruthless and vicious terrorists. The biggest problem with McLean, a problem we all face, is the belief that he can fix his problems tomorrow. He doesn't ever go deep and personal. He doesn't do what is needed because it is difficult, and he can simply do it another day. But being confronted by death, being shot, beat up, almost falling to his death, almost being blown to bits, any of those things get him, and all of a sudden tomorrow will never come because he is dead. Dead without doing what is right by his family or making up with his wife. Dead while experiencing a fate worse than death. This is why Die Hard is the best action movie ever. Because it's actually a drama about love and relationships, forgiveness and redemption, family and perspective. All the things Christmas is about. Die Hard is so good because while on the surface it's an action film, deep down, it's actually an inspiring, heartfelt Christmas drama. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow.